Hey guys, welcome back to Predictor Restoration Tips. Getting a little more advanced this time in terms of doing some troubleshooting and uh, check out up on the workbench. I had made this test jig a while ago for 21 inch sets using um, a, a Telecheck type enclosure universal CRT substitutor. Um, I modified the, the connections to use predictor plugs, I could plug it straight into a set. However, I made it with uh, the intent of using it with the 21 inch sets. Well, I was curious to see if it would work with a 17 inch set, and yes it can if you do a couple things. One, uh, the high voltage lead is smaller in diameter. This is one from a 21 inch set. The 17 inch set, the barrel on this is a little bit smaller diameter. So I could have done a couple things. One, uh, you could pop the top off of this and disconnect the anode lead and uh, swap it out. Or I picked up a couple of these high voltage connectors, cheap. Um, I think I got them on Amazon or eBay or something like that. I get two for I don't know, 20 bucks, something like that. Uh, so I just temporarily tacked one in place here with some high voltage putty to see if it would work. Uh, it does. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole or bore a hole on the side, about one three quarters inch diameter, and mount this on the side, and then uh, rig up two plugs, uh, one for each type of lead. Now, obviously, <laughs> I don't recommend everybody goes out and do, do this. I'm just saying if you're going to be working on a lot of them and working on both types of chassis, it's convenient, way more convenient than getting the actual chassis or sorry cabinet up on the workbench, or taking the head off and trying to rig it up. The other thing you have to do though is this is a 6.3 volt CRT. The normal CRT for a 17 inch set is 2.68 volts so you have to take the CRT uh, lead and uh, it's right here and route it, reroute it from the 2.68 volt tap on the terminal strip to somewhere where you can get 6.3 volts. There's a couple places, one over here one over here or on the terminal strip. The other thing is notice I have no tuner but I have a very nice crisp display. I just left the tuner off. It's in the, it's in the cabinet. Nothing hooked up to it. What I did do is take the input to the IF box and with a couple adapters plug it straight into my Suncor VG91 and put this in the video IF mode 45.75 RF output way low because this thing is going into a bunch of gain so you can just put this as low as it will go and you get a fantastic clear crisp test signal which is great for doing all your tweaks all your checkouts doing as much as you can before you put the chassis back in the cabinet Here's the final tip of the video, and this is a biggie. And I have to give all the credit to a service tech who passed this along to a member of the Predict a Collectors group on Facebook. I'm just passing along the knowledge. You may have noticed a faint vertical line in your vintage TV. It's not just predictors. I've seen this in other sets, but predictors definitely tend to have it. Uh, it'll move left and right with a horizontal hold, and if you play with the fine-tuning contrast, you can usually make it disappear. But there's a way to completely eliminate it. And that is by increasing the value of, the capac of a capacitor on the IF board. So this is the IF board. This is the board that sits underneath the shielding on both 17 and the 21-inch chassis. This is a detector tube, and this little cap is part of the filter on the detected AM video signal. It's a 5 picofarad cap, really tiny because they want to have pretty high bandwidth on this. However, there's something about a modern video signal. Maybe it's the color burst, maybe it's something to do with the horizontal sync pulse, but it causes sort of an echo of the horizontal interval to appear in the video portion. 
by slightly increasing the value of this capacitor it disappears now what you're doing is you are decreasing the bandwidth of the video detector however not a lot and it's not a big deal color was around when these sets came out but I'm thinking maybe they didn't uh, so it hasn't been completely determined 100% certainty that it's the color burst or <laughs> something else but definitely increasing the value of this cap makes it go away the value is 5 picofarad if you increase it to something between 20 and 30 it seems to preserve the bandwidth that we care about and eliminate that line. I've been using 22 picofarad mica caps and it works out great. So it's this little guy right next to either the 5 AM8 or 6 AM8 socket. It'll have a 5 on it and it's S2L dielectric which is pretty crappy. I don't think anybody even uses it anymore. So I would either go with an NP0 C0G ceramic or a mica cap. Yeah, it's a bit of work to dig it out. You have to remove the shield. You might have to pop the board out. But if you're working on one, if you've got it on your workbench, it's worth digging out that cap. If you clip the part off on the top and leave little stubs, you could probably tack on the new cap from the top of the board. So at least that'll save you a little bit of work. That's it for now. Hope you find, found, and find these tips useful. Thanks for watching.